Tesla has just been ranked the number one energy storage company in the world, the number one battery storage company. And I'm talking, you know, big mega batteries from those to medium sized batteries for factories, all the way down to the Powerwall battery. Now, a lot of people are baffled by this. They're, they're saying, why is Tesla ranked the number one battery storage company in the world? I mean, they don't even make the batteries themselves. They don't actually make the cells that go into these batteries. Well, there's a very good reason. I've, I've explained it on the channel before, but it's it's not really getting through to a lot of people out there. I know a lot of people who, you know, a lot, a lot of you guys who watch the channel know, but there's some key reasons why Tesla is ranked number one, even though they don't actually manufacture the battery cells themselves. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. It's great to see you. Now, the rankings. What were the top 10? There's a top 10 list here. Um, Tesla's energy storage business has never been better, they said. Anyhow, I'll get to the list first. If you've been following Tesla over the last few years, you would have seen that, well, this year, for example, the first time for a while, Tesla EV sales have begun to, to sag, to drop, but their energy storage business has grown. Energy Digital released its top 10 list of battery storage companies and it does include some battery companies themselves. And they say that these companies are revolutionizing the industry. Now, this is a global list. So um, Tesla isn't there just because it's an American list. It's not an American list. It's a global list. The mag magazine recognized a number of key players in the sector, and they're in this list as well. At the top of the list, though, is Tesla Energy, which has seen some pretty good growth in recent quarters. Now, to be fair, Tesla's growth in this in this area has been impressive, but they haven't grown as much as some other companies, such as, for example, BYD, who obviously make their, their own batteries. But the majority of BYD's growth has come from deploying batteries in their own cars and in other manufacturers' cars whereas the majority of Tesla's energy storage growth has just come from energy storage. So it's a bit of a different business strategy from the two companies. Tesla has been growing its energy storage business in recent years, said the magazine, established as a key player in the electric automotive industry. It has diversified its offerings to include battery storage, now one of its strongest offerings. Despite only launching its energy storage arm in 2015, as of 2023, the company had an output of 14.7 gigawatt hours in battery energy storage systems. That's gonna grow this year significantly. Its portfolio includes storage products like the Powerwall and the Megapack. Tesla is widely regarded as pioneering the future of energy thanks to its work in solar and battery storage, leading the renewable energy sector by providing innovative and efficient solutions for homeowners and businesses alike, they said. Now, you're probably thinking, you know, CATL or CATL, their battery innovations have won awards this year. They won their technology award for the best technology product worldwide this year in Europe. Uh, they've brought out, you know, some amazing different batteries. Their condensed battery that's just coming out 500 watts per kilo energy density, incredible. But why is CATL not here? Well, there's a key reason. CATL are really focusing on the battery cells, where Tesla is focusing on the entire package, the packaging, the software, the rollout. You know, Tesla is actually getting to these battery projects. It's helping build some of these mega batteries worldwide. It's not really CATL's deal or Cato's deal. Tesla is obviously investing a lot of money and it's invested a lot of time into getting the software working. So whilst the truth is Tesla, yeah, it doesn't make the cells individually, um, it actually provides an entire package. And a lot of that includes things like uh, grid integration. The grid integration, that's the challenging part, right? A lot of it includes the software to get these batteries to work, basically to get these batteries to be able to make money, um, to be able to turn on when they're needed, to integrate into the grid, and to essentially uh, replace Pika plants. That's where a lot of the money is coming from here, guys. A lot of these big, I mean, Tesla, yeah, they're selling a lot of power walls, but to be honest, Tesla's energy storage division, they're not really counting on power walls for their growth. They're counting on these big battery projects in these commercial level batteries where they're, that's where they're really putting out gigawatt hours of batteries. It's not really going into the power wall sector. So it's in this sector where Tesla is, it's helping companies make a lot of money. Companies are um, like, we're talking major global energy companies. They're not going to Cadle or BYD, the two biggest battery companies in the world. They're going to Tesla to say, we need you to basically um, install this, 
get this up and running for us, help us to make money. And that's what Tesla does. A little bit like um, you know Tesla's power walls being integrated into these systems where they can money make money for owners. Well, Tesla's doing the same thing for these, these massive energy companies. And in some cases, these energy companies are saying, well, we've installed this battery. It's been 12 months. This worked better than we thought it, it would. We've made a lot of money. And sometimes they've made enough money to cover the cost of the battery itself within the space of one or two years. It's a staggering, staggering profitability here. They basically replace gas peaker plants or coal peaker plants. And what happens is, and they say, we want to double the size of the battery. That's happened numerous times in the last few years. Tesla's like, yeah, no worries. We'll double the size of the battery. You pay us this much money and away they go. And that's, that's why sometimes you see the cost of these battery projects and you think that's more expensive than you would think it should be because... There's a lot more than just the battery cells and the mega packs themselves that go into the entire uh, deployment of some of the world's biggest batteries. So here are the list of the top 10. In number 10 is Vivint Solar. Acquired by Sunrun in 2020 for US 3.2 billion, Vivint Solar entered the home energy storage market in 2017 with a partnership with Mercedes-Benz followed by another partnership with LG Chem. Known for its residential solar insta installations, Vivint has emerged as a notable player in the energy storage sector. GE Vernova. With more than 130 years of experience behind it, GE Vernova is leading in a new era of technology as the energy transition continues to push an industry-wide shift. GE is diversifying to ensure customers of clean, reliable, and affordable power have access when needed. GE is known for its involvement in various energy storage projects, particularly when it comes to grid scale battery storage solutions. AES was in number eight. Identifying the critical role energy storage technology plays in decarbonizing the economy, AES leverages its position as one of the space's global leaders. Now the magazine said that through both its solutions and Fluence Energy, its joint venture with Siemens, AES has been pioneering grid scale energy storage technology for more than 15 years. In seventh place was a Chilean commodities producer called Sociedad, um, guys, I can't pronounce this, so I'm just gonna put the, the name on the screen, um, who have significant operations in lithium, primarily used in batteries for electric vehicles and energy storage systems. Its involvement in lithium production is where the company has made significant strides in the energy storage space due to their integral role in storage systems. Number six was Johnson Controls. And number five was Energizer. Now Energizer, you, I mean, I just bought uh, some lithium batteries from Energizer the other day. I actually bought about 36 of those AA small Energizer lithium batteries. And you probably know them for that, but they actually play a significant role in the energy storage sector. Thanks to their knowledge in consumer batteries spanning back more than a hundred years, they actually are deploying quite a lot of uh, micro scale batteries at the moment. When it comes to solar storage, its battery systems offer flexible storage options to support the powering of ever increasingly power line homes. So actually, yeah, Energizer do kind of a, a similar battery to what Tesla do with the Powerwall. Enphase Energy, particularly prominent in the energy storage when it comes to residential and small scale commercial markets, Enphase, promotes energy storage as a longer term investment. Their energy system combines solar batteries and EV charging so customers can make, use, save and sell their own energy. As you can see, they are one of Tesla's competitors. Albemarle. Now these guys are a big mining company. I'm sure you've heard of them before. I've mentioned them on the channel a few times. In second place is Panasonic. Now Panasonic's um, actual market share worldwide of battery production has actually declined over the last few years. They have increased their sales though and their deployment of batteries. Thanks to a wide and varied portfolio of solutions, Panasonic has positioned itself as one of the leaders in the energy storage vicinity. Panasonic is one of the industry's top names due to its advances in innovative battery technology alongside strategic partnerships and also extensive experience in manufacturing high quality products. Energy Digital says that Panasonic battery backup systems give customers more control over when they draw energy from the electric grid and because they are designed to automatically kick in, they instantly power critical loads and come into effect so quickly that power outages are often unnoticed. And all of this is quite interesting to me, guys. I find this intriguing how Panasonic can be a, big, a partner to Tesla and a big supplier to Tesla of batteries. 
Um, and then CHL, the same thing, right? Tesla and CHL, uh, Cato have that partnership, uh, even BYD. And yet they're all comp- competitors in the energy storage segment. It's intriguing how well Tesla have made this work. Well, it's it's kind of a middleman to some degree, but at the same time, Tesla does it so well that Tesla has been growing its energy storage business significantly. I mean, deploying 14.7 gigawatt hours in battery energy storage in 2023 was incredibly impressive. Now guys, what are your thoughts on this top 10 list here? Obviously, as you can see, the two biggest battery companies in the world uh, BYD and Cadle are not on this list. In fact, there is no Chinese companies in this top 10 list from Energy Digital. Uh, is there potentially um, a reason for that? Um, are they biased or do they just believe that these are the most influential um, energy storage companies in the world? I don't know. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.